Good morning, and welcome to Eastminster Presbyterian Church online service. We're happy to have you join us today. Um, a few announcements. My name is Kate Strickler. I'm one of the worship co-chairs. Today, because our Reverend Josh is on a week's vacation, we're honored to have the Reverend Christine Blackford be our, our pastor today and lead us in the service. If you've printed off your bulletin, you know you've been able to read those for whom we are praying this week. We'd like to add another one to it. Linda Williams is having surgery this week, and we want to pray for, for her surgery. The rest of the announcements are in your bulletin, and we welcome you again to our service. Let us worship our God. honor and a privilege to, to worship with you on this wonderful and gorgeous day. And I, I ask you to join with me in the call to worship. As we gather for worship, O oh Lord, help us let go of the things that trap us, the fears that silence us, the anger that haunts us. As we gather for worship, O oh Lord, help us let go of the worry, stress, or anxiety that have filled us since the last time we gathered in your presence. As we gather for worship, O oh Lord, help us let go of grief, sadness, or a desire for something else. As we gather for worship, O oh Lord, help us pick up the gift of your grace, your love, and your life that fills us. As we gather for worship, O oh Lord, help us pick up the gift of each other, the gift of this community, the gift of this time of worship. As we gather for worship, O oh Lord, help us say together, we are here, we are not alone. God is here, Jesus Christ is among us, and the Spirit stirs. Alleluia, amen.
With humility and honesty, let us bring ourselves before God with all the joys and the burdens life brings. And God, who is gracious, will hear our prayer. Lord, you are before and behind us, around us and within. We give you thanks for your constant presence, even as we admit that we don't always see or hear you with us. So often we find ourselves standing at the edge of uncertainty, of fear, of society, of faith, of life. We long for comfort, stability, familiarity. Forgive us, O oh God, for our selective memory, our tendency to nostalgia, our hearts set on self-preservation. Turn our eyes forward to where you are leading. Remind us that you are our God and will never leave us. Give us faith to see your way and courage to walk it. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. Therefore, we can be patient when things go against us, thankful when things go well, and for the future, we can have confidence in our faithful God. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Welcome all you children of God, and I ask the question, how many of you remember all of the Ten Commandments? I know you remember the beginning, the first four are about God, and the last six are about what we are to do. But how many of you get to like six and go, well, is that to kill or to, to what is it? So I'm here to help you remember the Ten Commandments. You have 10 fingers, and we have 10 commandments. Here we go. One. One God. You shall have one God, no other gods. Two. No. One. You shall not have any graven images. Three. What letter does it make? A W. Watch your words. Do not take the Lord's name in vain. Four, what is the thumb doing? Resting, honor the Sabbath and keep it holy. Five, honor your mother and father. Six, you shall not hurt one another, do not kill. Seven, it takes two for a marriage. Oh, there are others, but do not commit adultery. Eight, do not steal, do not take what is not yours. Number nine, do not bear false witness, do not lie. And number 10, do not covet. You are not to want what others have. Let us pray. Oh, gracious God, we give thanks for these Ten Commandments that have guided us in all along the way of our lives. Praise be to your name and your Son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our first reading, scripture reading, comes from Psalm 139. 
Listen and hear the word of God. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light around me become night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. Our second reading. <laughs> no.
And now, our second reading comes from the Gospel of Matthew, verses 1 through 12. Listen and hear God's holy word, and listen to what God is stirring within your heart on this day. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all things of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in prayer. Glorious God, you are a God who has made it a habit to stick with us through thick and thin. Thank you for calling us your own even in moments when we haven't been the best investment. Help us in our worship of you this day to be turned in a direction that pleases you. Amen. Our three-year-old grandson was asked if he remembered being a baby, and he said he did not, which in a way I believe is a good thing that God ordained. I clearly remember when they brought our firstborn into the hospital room in a bas bassinet on wheels. And even though you know you've conceived this child and now you've given birth to this child, you sit in amazement of those fingers and toes and that face. And with it, that kernel of fear and doubt Dear God, what are you thinking? This is a 24-7 job. Diapers, laundry, sleepless nights, burping, spitting up. And that was just the beginning. There was way more to come. I was a parent. Evidence was sitting right there. And it's what the tag said that she was wearing. And I came face to face with that sudden realization of what childhood rearing entailed. What in the world were we thinking? This would require so much work, more work than I had ever imagined. And the sacrifice, would we do it? Could I do it? Imperfect me raise a child. God help me. Now I believe that we live our lives before God. God as creator shapes and molds us in the womb, knitting our features and our lives. And God knows everything about us before we are born. And God is there to nurture us along the way, turning us around when needed. No matter where we go, we cannot get away from God. God knows. God knows the mistakes I have made, and God know, knows the mistakes that I will make. And of course, this is something my children do remember. And yet, there she lay, a child of God, for a gift given for an unknown length of time. 
To be a child, though, is not easy. God gave us laws to follow to keep us on the straight and narrow. It was meant to help us, to keep us right with God, and also with the community we live in. And you will find these laws in Leviticus. There are 613 of them. Now, I always chuckle when people tell me that they're going to read the Bible from cover to cover, from Genesis to Revelation, and I wonder, will they get past Leviticus? Leviticus reads in circles, maybe more spirals about cows and land and offerings to God. And God helps us out again, thankfully compressing those 613 laws down to 10 commandments, 10 fingers, 10 commandments, meant as a guide to give us direction, love God, and only God, worship God, honor your mother and father, and then the do nots. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill, cheat, lie, covet. As a child of God, this is what you are to do. We need to be right with God. But we also need to be right with our parents. To follow what may be considered law in the household, you know what those laws are. You grew up with them. But this is also where things become a little murky. Ken Jennings, who is a Jeopardy champion and hosted Jeopardy in the first six weeks after Alex Trebek passed away, wrote a book called Because I Said So where he searches, and as his subtitle states, for the truth behind the myths, tales, and warnings every generation passes down through the centuries to its kids, and then proceeds to debunk or confirm the truth of the matter. How many of you have heard any or all of the following? Put a sweater on. It's cold. Don't eat snow. It'll make you sick. Five-second rule. Sometimes the number changes. I told you to go before we left the house. Don't cross your eyes. They'll stay like that. Don't look at the sun. You'll go blind. And of course, the one, life isn't fair. Parents go to great lengths to protect their child from the dangers of the world. How many of you have followed all of your parents' suggestion and obeyed all those rules? How many of you can say that you have never broken any of the Ten Commandments? We all have our stories. We all have broken the rules. Let's face it, we all sin. We have sinned and we will sin again. It's so annoying. It's so frustrating. Perfection is unattainable. Now, if any of you took geometry in high school, do you remember the proofs that you had to do? Proofs where you show by multiple steps some mathematical concept. Well, what we have proof of here is that biblical law, those Ten Commandments, plus parental law, and yes, even some of those myths and warnings, is proof. You and I are perfectly human. There's no question about it. We are perfectly able to put our foot in our mouth. We are perfectly capable of doing wrong, of messing up at any time, with our family, but also in business. God gave us free will to choose wisely, and along with it, the option to choose not so wisely. We are perfectly human children of God. And that brings us to the Beatitudes in the Gospel of Matthew. 
Beginning with chapter 5 and verse 1, the gospel writer tells a similar story to Moses. When Moses leaves the Israelites, he goes up the mountain and receives the Ten Commandments. Jesus leaves the crowd, goes up the mountain. The disciples come to him, and he teaches them the Beatitudes. God gives the law to Moses, and Jesus re-envisions the law through the Beatitudes. And that's when we fall into the trap, as David Lowe's puts it, of thinking Jesus is setting up conditions that we are to be poor in spirit. We are to be meek. Meek not in terms of being weak, but strong, inner strength and integrity. We are to be hungry for God and God's word, to be merciful, pure in heart, peacemakers, and know that we will mourn and we will be persecuted and rejected. The Beatitudes are poetic. There's a beauty to them. But at the same time, they seem impractical for the world in which we live, the opposite of the way of the world. Isn't it just like Jesus to turn things upside down? The Beatitudes are not imperatives. They are to be taken as a whole as a way of being, because they're interlaced and they build one upon the another. Now, Beatitudes, according to a theologian, Charles Cook, gives us three fundamental truths. Truths that makes living in this world possible through the Beatitudes. First, what God gives us is simplistic. Listen to the words without adding anything, without subtracting from them. No prejudice, no supposing they are impossible. Simply hear the words. Second, the Beatitudes are hopeful. Jesus speaks directly to you and to me. You are blessed when you dem demonstrate humility. You are blessed when you are a non-anxious peacemaker. You are blessed when you show mercy. Live into hopefulness as opposed to the anger and cynicism of the world. And lastly, and most important, to hear the Beatitudes as compassion. Compassion not pity. Pity is where you separate yourself and you feel sorry for someone. And it's also not sympathy, where you understand the situation, but you do not engage, and instead offer suggestions and advice. Uh-uh. Go deeper. Henry Nouwen puts it this way. Compassion grows with the inner recognition that your neighbor shares your humanity with you. And as such, compassion knocks down the walls that separate you from another. Knocks down all barriers, be it language, wealth or poverty, intelligence or ignorance. We are one, created from the same dust, Subject to the same laws, we are all children of God. It was a number of years ago now, an elderly woman in this church struggled with health, mental health issues. It was a lifelong struggle. Unfortunately, her husband died before her. And in the span of time before and more so following his death, she had alienated just about everyone, her children, her friends, if she ever really had any. 
and helpers in the church. Now this was a time before Stephen ministry, so all the individuals, church saints, still willing to work with her, gathered together and made a plan. The crux of the problem was that the pendulum of her emotion would swing one way towards thankfulness for a meal or for groceries. And a day or two later would swing the other way toward anger and accusation. Are you trying to poison me? Or something in that order. The plan was for each individual to take turns to work with her until that pendulum swung back towards the negativity. When that happened, the next good soul would step in and take over. It worked beautifully. When she died, though, no one came to claim her body. It was heartbreaking. Finally, her brother was found, and he took care of all the details. Besides myself as efficient, there were ten people present at her funeral. Sitting in the back pew were the nine Eastminster ladies that cared for her. And sitting in the second row was her granddaughter. Now, preparation for this funeral was rather difficult, What do you say about someone who's so unpredictable and seemingly unlikable, unlovable? However, it was the granddaughter herself that brought it all home to me. When the service was over, I saw her heading in my direction. She told me she only had one question. Is my grandmother in heaven? The earnest look on her face displayed the importance of the answer. This was someone who loved her grandmother. Yes, I said. She is a child of God and rests in the gentle arms of God now. Here was a perfectly human child of God, seemingly unlovable and at times hostile, hostile, hostile. and here were nine compassionate servants embracing mercy while being persecuted and rejected. In doing God's work, they proclaimed God's love. They displayed meekness with an inner fortitude to persevere. Blessed are those who see God's blessing in their neighbor's need and praise God for the privilege. As perfect human, as perfectly human children of God, may God bless you as you live into the compassion of the Beatitudes. Amen.
Let us confirm and affirm what we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, who was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We are blessed in so many ways, and what a privilege it is to share God's blessing. Thanks be to God. This week, we had a send-off for Ruth McCargo on Wednesday to her maker. Praise be to God for a life now complete and such a faithful servant and now a saint of the church. We also ask for prayers for Linda Williams, who will be having surgery this week. So let us come before God in prayer. A glorious God. You are a creator God, a God of love, a God of grace, always watching over us, always close. It is your son that you sent into the world. Jesus Christ came to show us the way, to teach us how to live in this world. Open our eyes to see Open our ears to hear, to know your presence as we tend to our neighbors, teach our children, and find our way in faith. Enable us, send us to carry your message of compassion into the world and be as you created us to be. Yes, we mess up, yet you are there to encourage us and forgive us. We welcome such blessing. On this day, we pray for our world leaders who gather to find ways to work together for harmony, for peace. We pray for our nation and the restlessness, and we long for harmony and stability. We pray for doctors and nurses, and exhausted teachers. And we pray for the children now ready for summer. We pray for the church gathered here today and all over the world once again. Watch over the world you have created. May your spirit continue to encourage. We pray for Ruth McCargo's family and friends in her passing. Hold them close. And we lift up Linda Williams. Place your healing hand upon her in her surgery. Gracious God, surround those who deal with health issues, depression, loss, addiction, divorce, separation, anxiety. Listen as we silently lift up their names to you. May your love encourage and renew hope. Loving God, be present with us in our daily life. 
Help us to be good servants and do all that we faithfully can. In the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray like this, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. are perfectly human. God created us more than able to show compassion. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God in the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>